Last but not least, uh, we still have the uh, very interesting research paper presentation. And um, thank you for the participants who are still with us this evening. We still have 35 minutes to go before we end uh, today's session. Next is the paper research presentation from Professor Jian Min Sun from Ren Renmin University of China on facilitating organizational innovation through human resource practices, employees' views. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good uh, good uh, almost evening, ladies and gentlemen. The, uh, the last is usually not the least, but the toughest, because we have to reconceptualize borrowing Karen's insightful presentation. Are you tired? Yes, I am. Please speak it loudly. I'm very tired. I'll try to finish it before the, uh, before the uh, dinner time. Uh, sincerely, thanks to the organizer of the conference for offering us the uh, wonderful opportunity to enjoy the hospitality and uh, the insightful presentations. I also want to thank Lin for giving me this opportunity uh, to share with you something, the, uh, a little bit of change about the uh, title. Um, because I'm a business guy, uh, my background is in psychology. So uh, all the research and uh, studies are from a more micro level. Uh, this is a little bit different. And this is a, a research project, a large research project, a part of that, uh, sponsored by National uh, Natural Science Foundation. We try to identify what management practice that would facilitate or enhance uh, organization innovation, which is a worldwide attractive topic uh, in the recent years. So I'm talking about the, uh, how to facilitate individual creativity by human resource practices. Uh, uh, the perceptions or perspectives from employees, uh, how the employees perceive that, what types of uh, practice, human resource practices would uh, uh, would be helpful for individual uh, creativity. Uh, this is a very popular topic, as everybody knows. So uh, uh, we, we try to do something in China uh, with a qualitative approach. And this is the exploratory stage. And uh, the data were collected through in-depth interview and open-ended questionnaires. And uh, we also uh, used the coding and uh, some others. And finally, we got the seven dimensions with uh, 79 practices that are positively related or influence, would influence uh, individual creativity. And uh, 37 was negative practices or would negatively influence uh, the individual creativity. And the implicate, possible implications for workplace learning are discussed uh, at, the, at the end of the presentation. And uh, these are, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with these guys. These are from business uh, field, uh, all are from the top journal, and they're talking about the importance, uh, the necessity of organization innovation in the globalization era or for the global competitiveness. And, uh, uh, Teresa Amabel from uh, Stanford, uh, no, from Harvard University. Uh, we basically followed her framework and ideas. Because at the beginning, most of the scholars who studied the individual creativity or organization innovation are focusing on uh, the individual characteristics. And uh, since the 1990s, uh, Amabel and some others proposed another model try to identify the factors from the environment or the context, which is also 
the theme of the presentations in, in, in morning and in the afternoon in, in all the different fields. And uh, we, we believe that organizational innovation can be improved by enhancing individual creativity, which is uh, still a problem or, uh, or, or an unanswered question that how, as managers or leaders or policy makers, that we can motivate the individual creativity within the organization, which in turn could influence or increase the organizational innovation. What happened here? There's some typos, no typos. There's some, doesn't matter. A mobile county, there's a coffin, coffin here. And uh, uh, one study that we did with 6,000 Chinese knowledge workers, you know, the scientists and engineers, found that the, the main obstacles for Chinese knowledge workers for creativity is not the lack of uh, creative, creative ability. Instead, the willingness or the motivation to be creative, which if you know anything about the tradition or traditional culture of China, is not surprising because people don't want be to, to be different from any others. Okay. So the problem becomes, or the question becomes, how to find out the, the proper situation or environment which could motivate the Chinese employees to be more proactive, no, pr to be more creative. This is, this is uh, the, the shortcomings or, or the pitfalls of the previous studies that they focus too much on the individual characteristics with a psychological approach. And later on, as I mentioned, scholars began to emphasize the role of the environment that could uh, increase uh, the individual creativity or positively, either positively or negatively. Okay. Uh, Amabel proposed a com called a Componential Model of Creativity, which identified three factors that would be facilitating the individual uh, creativity, the organization and the resources and the management practices. Unfortunately, she didn't, they, they didn't identify specific practices when they say management practices, which uh, from the perspective of a practice, it's a little bit useless. But they do identify or give us some definitions about the environment, which is not a specific or, or objective. It's the perception of the individual employee. They call it the psychological context of the creativity, which means it's how the employees understand the situation or the environment. That's the psychological meaning that respondents or individual employees attach to a specific event or situation, which we uh, basically followed this idea. And uh, also it has been recognized that, uh, and also uh, empirically demonstrated that the human resource management as one of the main management practices within the organization could help to improve the organization performance with a whole bunch of publications, the Academy of Management Journal, GAP, PSYC, Journal of Management, and mainly in the Western countries, North America, so I'm more influenced by North America. And, uh, but some studies uh, in China also. Uh, the, but so far, most of the studies have been focusing on the bottom line, the financial outcomes when we talk about organizational performance. Less research have been talking about or studied the relationship between human resource management and the individual creativity or organizational innovation, which is becoming popular in the past few years, three or five years. And the findings told us that creativity is closely related or could be enhanced by rewarding system. Most of the studies said the, the reward system could enhance the individual creativity to a great deal, but some others get the opposite results of co conclusion, that they don't agree. At least the, the short-term focused performance appraisal to some extent would undermine the individual creativity, which is very 
to me, it's, it's, it's very interesting. So there's a debate there. And uh, the performance of pre-sold system is also uh, arguable. Uh, some of the studies said the performance of pre-sold would influence positively the individual creativity. But others demonstrated that no, they would undermine also or, or, or decrease the level of creativity. Yeah. And another factor related with human resource management practice is job characteristics, and uh, which is not surprising if you are familiar with uh, Heckman Oldham's job character characteristics model. Those uh, jobs that have uh, characteristics such as autonomous uh, feedback, uh, quickly feedback, and uh, technology-based or something would be more uh, interesting or motivating than those jobs that don't have these characteristics. Uh, these are the basically, these, the, this relationship is basically supported in all the different types of researches. So, so far we can get the conclusion that these human resource practices would be positively related with individual creativity, whatever uh, you, you, you define, however you define the individual creativity. That reward, uh, the extensive training, or innovation-based orientation training, and the challenging tasks, or proper job pressure, which is job characteristics, and job enrichment and the job rotation, combination of individual and the team work, which is very interesting. When the whole world was emphasizing the importance of teamwork, and the research found that not all the teamwork would influence or, or positively to the individual creativity. And some people still enjoy individual work, that they don't like the teamwork. And the challenging goals, the positive performance feedback, these are, are, these are the, the basically uh, findings. And those are, are closely related with traditional human resource practices. Those are more related with uh, the learning organization or workplace learning activities, like exploratory learning, empowerment, uh, multiple recognition, and the participation of decision making, and uh, diversified teamwork. Uh, still some debate there about the last point is the support from the boss and the multiple cry advances. But basically these are findings or conclusions from the Western countries and the cultures. So what we want to need to know is are, are, what about these debates, the three factors that are the positively related or negatively related with the uh, individual creativities, reward measures, teamwork, and the performance appraisal. So our research question is basically what types of human resource practices in Chinese organizations or in the eyes of the Chinese employees that would facilitate the individual creativity. And then we try to tap the perceptions comprehensively or the psychological context uh, using the uh, Amabel's uh, definition about all the practices that might serve as a creative enforcer or influences. And uh, the research is based on, as I mentioned, uh, Amabel's definition the contextual theory of organizational creativity, which is uh, the psychological meaning of environmental events would largely influence uh, the individual creativity and furthermore influence or increase the organizational innovation. And we used the in-depth interview with 35 professionals in R&D sales, different types of uh, industries, bank and retail, and each interview lasts about one and uh, two and a half hours. And also we used the questionnaire, open-ended questionnaire uh, with uh, 128 responded, valid responses. Uh, questions we asked basically, uh, these are examples. What management practices or measures in your company do you think are good for motivating creativity or innovation of employees? Please give us a detailed explanation or what practices or measures that would hinder the implementation of creativity, and blah, blah, blah. Um, 
the, these are also the questions that are included in the open-ended questionnaire. And the three PhD students who are supposed to be the subject of, uh, the, the expert of subject matter, uh, who knows uh, creativity, innovation, who knows research methods, but blend with our research purpose, uh, goals, objectives, are uh, invited to help us to do the coding. And they are uh, uh, asked to pick up those meaningful practices uh, for Chinese companies or organizations in terms of the human resource management practices. And the practices with the same meaning or closely with, with related with each other are combined together. And those with uh, s some specific meanings or not related can, can hardly be characterized as human resource practices are deleted. And agreement were calculated with a kind of coefficient alpha. And the frequencies also for each uh, practices are calculated. And finally, we got more than 1,000 statements. That means the practices that are based on the uh, 38 interviews and 128 questionnaires and uh, 70, 700 positive and 300 or something, uh, 700 from interview and 300 from uh, questionnaire. And uh, these seven are the positively influenced factors and of almost the 300 that are negatively related. And averagely, each respondent uh, gave us, uh, provided about averagely 12 practices. And by three round uh, classifications, coding combinations, and we get 116 practices and 79 positive and 37 negative practices. Then we classified these practices into seven dimensions and named respectively composition system, career advancement, training and development, performance appraisal, job characteristics and uh, work condition, and the corporate culture, which is a very complicated dimension, and including the sub-dimensions like a harmonious relationship, guanxi with the coworkers and the bosses and, and the subordinates, and the climate, innovative climate, and uh, the rules and the procedures, and the opportunities to make suggestions so the management of the organization, the things like that. And these, oops, no, come back. I'll give you some examples to demonstrate these seven dimensions, like compensation system, that the pay level is competitive in the local area and also in the industry. And so that means that creative people are still working for pay, money. And the reward system for creative suggestions and a high rate of commission for selling new products or services because we included the sales people, not only the R&D people, guys. In a career advancement opportunities that expected a career advancement and the link between promotion and the creative products, which uh, make a lot of sense for most of the Chinese organizations because if you know anything about the Fred Lucens, was a professor from the University of uh, Lincoln, uh, Nebraska Lincoln. They're successful and effective managers, because most of the Chinese managers like that. The effective managers may not necessarily be successful managers. By successful, it means promoted more quickly. Uh, the effective means that you, the managers can do their job well. But theoretically, those who can do, who are, who are effective, uh, could be more successful. But in practice, these two are separated from each other, which is a very typical situation in China. So uh, the, the performance are not related with promotion. So this, this makes sense that uh, our creative people are looking for, expecting for promotion based on the performance or creative outcomes. And more opportunities for promotion for a promotion for creative employees instead of just those guys who are good at following rules or listen to the obey the bosses or leaders. 
training development, which is very interesting, providing training programs for creative thinking and ability, which is a uh, pitfalls of the Chinese education system from the elementary, kindergarten even, to the uh, higher education. Because stu Chinese students are very good at taking examinations, but not at generating ideas, especially universities. And job characteristics, have time to relax myself and to think over my job. They don't want to be too tired. Job burnout is one of the big issues, the challenges that most of the Chinese professionals are facing, including me, myself. The interesting job, I can determine the way to fi finish my job that's autonomous, or no intervention from my boss, which is uh, most of the Chinese uh, leaders are good at, autocratic or dictatorship, try to do everything for their employees or either give orders. Give me opportunity to learn new things, which is a good, good news for, for, for us. Performance appraisal, they put more weights on the selling of new products. And do not pay too much attention to the short-term goals, which is very hard, because we are, most of the Chinese universities are also facing the challenge. That we have to be evaluated annually. Publication, SSCI or SCI, uh, one paper every year at least. There no way for promotion. Uh, and you have to publish in English language, Chinese, no, short term. And the companies, exactly the same. Do not put creativity as a measure of performance. Otherwise, it would become a burden, not my interest. A work condition, which makes sense, send employees to professional meetings, subscribe uh, journals, magazines, professional organizations, sufficient facilities, equipment, materials, comfortable work environment, which is a still a big issue for even big companies. Uh, I guess this might be a little bit different from Western findings or Western conclusions, people, but has something to do with uh, uh, the presentation uh, made by Professor Kim this morning. As uh, you might agree that most of the Asian people are good at looking for opportunities to at attach themselves to a specific group or team or organization or even the individual person. I, uh, we, are, we, are, we are studying another, another research topic I'm right now doing is commitment to the organization or commitment to the boss or supervisor, which in, at least in China, commitment to the boss or supervisor is more popular and resulted in better performance than commitment to the organization. Um, intention, uh, turnover intention, job satisfaction, organization commitment, OCB, it was never. So private relationship beyond the work relationship, which is still popular in China, you have to develop uh, the personal relationship beyond, the, based on the work relationship with your colleagues or coworkers. Carry employees' personal life and help to solve the life problems. This is the expectation for their bosses or the leaders. Yes. My supervisor serves as a good work model so I can follow him or her. Creative climate, emphasize the importance of creativity in, in cases, and allowing mistakes and failure on the job, which is a big challenge for most of the Chinese managers, because we are very afraid of making mistakes. Listen to suggestions from employees. Um, and some, these are the examples of the positive practice that could influence or facilitate the creativity. But some practices might hinder or, or, or bind the uh, the creativity, individual creativity, the complicated and the strict procedures and the processes. And the too formal or unpractical procedures resulted in the delay of the job. You have to go SO, ISO 9000. Yes, a lot of Chinese companies are adapting that standard, but most of the employees don't like that. Leaders can think too much about the stability which is, the, uh, which is the theme of the whole country right now, harmonious and the stability. Afraid of making mistakes. Too many latent rules in the daily operation uh, or interaction. 
too much time to deal with interpersonal issues that Guan Xi, you have to consider about the who's who's who, uh, very complicated relationship. Too much teamwork, this is what I'm talking about, that not all the employees enjoy teamwork, that some still believe that individual work could be more effective for individual creativity. Opportunities for voice, the leaders pay no attention to, they don't listen to the employee suggestions, quickly reject the suggestions or ideas from the subordinates. Uh, oops, oops, what's wrong? Learning by doing. Oh, this, this is also a learning opportunity. Leaders try to do everything by themselves instead of try to help or, or to, 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 to facilitate the employee to do that. Free and open communication, not free, but that's uh, And these are the frequencies that uh, were combined from their interview under the open-ended questionnaire about how many respondents mentioned these practices. Uh, based on our uh, classification of the seven dimensions. And for pay system or composition system, we included the 12 practices, career advancement three, five, 11 or something. Now these, this is a parenthesis. These are the percentage that for many respondents mentioned that. And the, the red figure might be interesting to you. As for harmony, that's a lot of that's a big number, and also a big number here. Teamwork, that's a big number here. And the rules, big number here. And the voice opportunities, a big number here. Okay. And the others, almost the same with the, with the findings or conclusions from uh, Western cultures. Implications. Leadership modeling could be a very important factor in facilitating individual creativity in Chinese organizations and the support for learning and creativity. Also, these are the leaders' roles or responsibilities. And also, the role modeling from colleagues, not only from the bosses. But my explanation is there's the lack of this is the lack of the in independence of most of the people still looking for somebody to follow. Although it's not, not only in the daily life, in the work, or in the individual uh, creativity, creative behaviors. Sharing of experiences and knowledge needed to more open system, other co open communication, free and open communications and the learning opportunities within and outside of the organization. Uh, actually, this is uh, uh, probably one of the reasons, main reasons that a lot of Chinese companies spend a lot of money invested, uh, huge, in training, but not equally to the employees, usually above middle level managers. I was reporting, I, I did a presentation two weeks ago in Kowloon in RT, RN3, I joined RN3, and reported their uh, human resource development, development practice, the competencies of HRD people. And uh, there are altogether 50 executive MBA programs right now in China, including five international, uh, uh, such as Maryland University, Smith, and the uh, University of Washington, Orleans, which for the e executive MBA program, it cost about 50,000 US dollars, which is a huge amount of money for most of the Chinese, but it has been extremely popular, very crowded, as 30, 40 participants for each class. And I know there are one university, they could enroll over 300 every year over the country for the executive MBA participants and made a lot of money. And most of, the, most of the executives are paid by their organizations or employee, employers, and some by themselves. So, uh, and uh, some of the university, some of the corporate universities that's becoming popular, co corporations are, are 
setting up their own universities, try to formal, it's not a virtual organization to train their employees. And the sufficient resources for completing the tasks, and the relationship by communication, by you know, the open uh, and the free relationships. So these could be regarded as uh, 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 the workplace learning practices or what as experts we can do in helping the organization to facilitate the individual creativity based on our research. And we would follow this uh, uh, into the second stage to do a quantitative research. We are standardized the questionnaire and then we could do more statistics with the basic findings. Thank you. Three speakers, Professor Karen Ewans, Professor Milan Po, and Professor Jen Min San for their interesting presentation. And also thank you all participants, foreign and Thai, for being here with us the whole day. And uh, I do hope that you will have a very pleasant evening and enjoy your memorable stay in Bangkok, Thailand, and see you tomorrow.